Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Gamma third quarter 2018 report shows sales uptick. Virgin Orbit reaches taxi test milestone. And Uniform Law Commission sets its sights on drone legislation. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 16th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Gamma has published its 2018 third quarter aircraft shipments and billings report. The overall delivery of airplanes and rotorcraft increased in the first nine months compared to the same time period in 2017, but with some mixed performance within the types. Total billings compared to the same period in 2017 decreased. This is one of those few times since the Great Recession that we have seen all segments up in shipment numbers, said Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce. While there remain some soft spots in a few segments, including business jet deliveries and impacts being felt from global trade disputes, I'm optimistic about our industry's performance in 2019, given continuing healthy demand for tax expensing, stabilization of the used market, and the number of new products being introduced to the marketplace. Piston rotorcraft deliveries increased by 15.8% to 220 units. Turbine rotorcraft shipments increased by 8.3% to 510 unit deliveries. Piston airplane deliveries increased by 8.3% to 784 units. Shipments of turboprops improved by 5.6% from 374 to 395 airplanes. And business jet shipments increased from 433 to 446 deliveries. After the break, air show announcer Hugh Oldman announces retirement. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Veteran air show announcer Hugh Oldman has announced he is hanging up his microphone, at least for the most part. On his Facebook page, Oldman said he completed the last air show where Pro Air Show LLC provided both sound and narration services to the air show industry, as it has for some 40 plus years. The equipment trailer goes on the market tomorrow. My high mileage body simply cannot meet the expectations of my youthful mind. And Jane has said no more, Oldman wrote. Multiple pilots flying over Ireland reported seeing a very bright UFO last week. At least four pilots reported seeing the object. One asked if there was any military activity in the area and was told there was not. One pilot told Shannon ATC that the object was moving very fast. It came up on our left-hand side to the north. We saw a bright light and it just disappeared at a very high speed. We were just wondering. We didn't think it was a likely collision course. Just wondering what it could be, the pilot said. An automated stall prevention system on Boeing's new 737 MAX airplanes was not properly publicized and is being looked at as a possible contributing factor in an accident in Indonesia that fatally injured 189 people when one of the planes went down October 29th. A report from the Wall Street Journal, which indicates that the sources at the FAA 
pilots at U.S. carriers, and other regulators are saying the pilots were not trained on the use of the systems before the new 737 variant was phased into fleets. The commander of Air Combat Command and Command Chief recently visited Tyndall Air Force Base for the second time since Hurricane Michael caused catastrophic damage last month. Nearly 2,000 military members are currently working alongside civilians and contractors to recover and reconstitute. The progress we have made in the last couple weeks has been encouraging and has exceeded any expectations that we had, said Colonel Brian Laidlaw, 325th Fighter Wing Commander. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Virgin Orbit has completed its first high-speed taxi test with a Launcher One rocket installed under the wing of Cosmic Girl, the company's modified Boeing 747. Richard Branson announced the milestone. Zoom, 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 Launcher One was on the move again, this time for our very first high-speed taxi test. Not only did we ramp all the way up to more than 110 knots, we also used the day as an opportunity to load real flight software onto Launcher One for the first time, Virgin Galactic tweeted. Cosmic Girl has been modified to carry the 52-foot-long Launcher One to an altitude of 35,000 feet, where it will separate from the aircraft and carry payloads up to the size of a refrigerator into orbit. In October, Virgin Orbit mated a Launcher One rocket to Cosmic Girl for the first time. The company says Cosmic Girl is the first 747 in history that has been converted to launch rockets. It can fly thousands of miles in any direction, at 24 hours notice, to deliver to the right orbit. Currently, clients have to wait between 18 and 24 months for manufacturing in a ground launch. After these messages, Uniform Law Commission sets its sights on drill legislation. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. A group of lawyers will meet in Detroit in the near future. And one of the items on their agenda could radically alter the way drills are regulated. Called the Uniform Law Commission, it is made up of attorneys appointed by state governments to craft model legislation for consideration by state legislators across the country. They are currently working on a draft, tort law relating to Drones Act, that they claim will protect privacy, but does not recognize FAA's jurisdiction. The ULC cites U.S. versus Cosby, in which the Supreme Court said that if the landowner is to have full enjoyment of the land, he must have exclusive control of the immediate reaches of the enveloping atmosphere. Otherwise, buildings cannot be erected, trees cannot be planted, and even fences cannot be run. The principle is recognized when the law gives a remedy in case overhanging structures are erected on adjoining land. The landowner owns at least as much of the space above the ground as can occupy or use in connection with the land. The proposed model legislation would make any drone flying lower than 200 feet above the ground or improvement built upon the surface of the land guilty of aerial trespass. We'll keep you updated. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and we'll see you Monday.